Hi, my name is Kmot. This is a continuation of the drafting of the income statement for financial accounting and for, and I'll be looking at the question paper which was written on June 2016. For ease of reference, I'd like to refer to this presentation as part three of 3.1. I'm going to deal with the calculation of certain expenses. I've actually divided this presentation into two. This will relate to certain expenses and the last presentation in the income statement will tackle other expenses that are left out in this presentation. I expect students to be able to draft the income statement and I expect students to achieve the following learning outcomes specifically relating to these expenses. They must be able to identify operating expenses that are taken into account in completing the income statement and they must be able to perform calculations uh, relating to adjustments affecting such operating expenses. Without wasting your time, I'd quickly like to go to the question paper. Um, there you go. That's the question paper. Remember, we're busy with question three, drawing up of the income statement for the 28 February 2015. We've already dealt with other aspects that are taken into account in the determination of the net profit. I'm going to focus on expenses. Remember, as a general rule, expenses will be reflected under the nominal section and students must solely focus on the debit side of the nominal section. I'm not going to focus on anything that is highlighted in green because it has already been taken into account. The first expense I'd like to tackle is the discount allowed. I'm going to copy description. I'm going to take it to my Excel spreadsheet that I'll be using to illustrate uh, the completion of the income statement. I'm just going to paste it there. Remember, I'm dealing with expenses and we less them from the equation, so it's less operating expenses. Operating, I'm just going to say that to cut it short. And essentially, operating expenses will be determined by taking the sum of all those items. Still going to deal with the, those items at a later stage. Let me just finish with my formula. It has to be deducted from gross profit to arrive at net profit. There, I'm going to insert a minus sign. So I don't have to do a minus sign for each and every item. There you go. Let's quickly go to discount allowed. Uh, the thought process is that we should always go to the amount as per the total balance and go to the adjustment and check whether there's any uh, transaction affecting the calculation of discount allowed. The first transaction relates to bad, debt, uh, bad debts. It doesn't affect the uh, discount allowed. Number two relates to creation for bad debts. doesn't affect discount allowed. The third one, the provision for discount allowed, it looks like it might affect discount allowed. Essentially, what I'm saying is students need to be careful we clearly distinguish between discount allowed and the provision for discount allowed. So discount allowed has already been incurred by the business by allowing discount to its customers. However, the provision for discount allowed, even though it's treated as an expense, it's it's not yet uh, incurred. A business is making a provision that it might have to uh, in care and expense relating to provision for discount allowed. So for that reason, we clearly um, distinguish between the two. For the purpose of completion of the income statement, we will have an item called uh, provision for uh, discount allowed, uh, uh, the creation of the discount allowed. And that will be an expense because we intend giving uh, customers a discount. To cut the story short, that transaction will not going to impact the calculations relating to that transaction. I've already checked there isn't any other transaction affecting the calculation of discount allowed, so I'm going to take discount allowed, that amount of 85.40. I'm going to copy that amount. I'm going to take it there. I've already explained there isn't any transaction affecting discount allowed. Moving along swiftly, what's the next item? The next item is bad debts. I'm going to take quickly take the description. Allow me. I'm going to copy bad debts there. 
Is there any specific transaction relating to bad debts? We given that amount and we also given that transaction. That transaction specifically affects bad debts. I'm going to deal with it. I want to highlight it in green. I quickly want to take you to the calculation spreadsheet so that you can see exactly how bad debts was determined. So this is a determination of bad debts. I propose that you adopt the following in calculation the bed in calculating the bed debts. You're gonna start with the amount as per the trial balance. TB stands for trial balance. So you already given an amount as per the trial balance. There you go. So so you provided an amount as per the trial balance. You're going to start with an amount as per the trial balance. And then you're going to take into account adjustment number one. Adjustment number one specifically stated that uh, one of the debtors of the business will not be able to pay. Therefore, the business has decided to declare uh, the debtor as an irrecoverable uh, debt. Therefore, it will, we're going to add that amount to the total of the bad debts. So you're going to start with a uh, amount as per trial balance, and I'm going to take factor in the adjustment as per transaction number one. We're going to add the two up to determine the amount that will be taken to bad debts. So the amount that will be taken to bad debts, it's 18,155. I'm going to do it there. Allow me to punch it. I'm going to say that was the 155 as per the trial balance plus the 18,000 that has gone bad. There you go. That's essentially how you perform the calculation. Moving along swiftly, let's go to the next item. The next item relates to packaging material. I'm going to copy packaging material. I'm going to paste it there. I'm going to follow the same rationale. And, uh, I'm going to take that amount as per the trial balance. And if there's any adjustment, I'm going to factor in that adjustment. There's that adjustment. Allow me to highlight that in green. We specifically told that there was a physical stock taking and trading stock. We're not going to take it into account. We already took it into account. We concerned with packaging material. There was stock on hand relating to packaging material. Okay, stock on hand relating to packaging material. Let me take you to the presentation quickly. So that's packaging material. You're going to start with amount as per the trial balance. Remember the same thought process is followed. And then we're going to deduct in this case, we're going to deduct the packaging material on hand because we don't want to expense this item. We're going to take it to, to stock so that it can form part of our stock on hand. So we're not going to expense it. So essentially, all the time when there's stock on hand, we deduct it from the value of stock in, given in, in the trial balance. So this specifically relates to a packaging material as a general rule. We want to recognize this as an expense. However, if there's anything on hand, we're going to deduct this something on hand to arrive at our final expenditure. Expense that will be taken to the income statement. So let's quickly go do the calculation. I'm going to say equals to the amount as per the trial balance was 7050 and the stock on hand was 215. There you go. So we got to the same figure. Moving along swiftly, let's go to the next item. The next item, it was packaging material. Uh, I should have highlighted, ideally I should have highlighted all this amount so that I don't refer to these amounts in the next uh, presentation. I'll quickly highlight, apologies for wasting your time. Moving along swiftly, custom duty has been taken into account. I'm not going to refer to custom duty. Remember when we did cost of sales, we took custom duties into account. The next item I'm going to deal with is water and electricity. Let me quickly copy the description. Take it there. The starting amount is an amount of 120. Is there an adjustment relating to water and electricity? Of course there is. There you go. That transaction. I want to highlight that transaction. The same logic applies. Let's quickly read the uh, transaction. The water and electricity account of 1,600 for February 2015 has not yet been paid. So this is an expense payable. So let's, let me quickly take you to the presentation slide. We're going to start with the amount as per the trial balance. I'm assuming the same logic that I did in previous uh, calculations. And I'm going to take the expense payable into account as per transaction number six. 
Remember, this will add to that in order to determine the final expense. In accounting work with an accrual basis, if the business has incurred the expense, even if it has not actually paid uh, the actual money relating to the expense, that expense will be taken into account in the current financial year if it's attributable to the current financial year. So to cut the story short, we take the amount as per the total balance and we add the expense payable. We're going to come to an amount of 121600 relating to total and electricity. We're going to take that amount to the income statement. Let's quickly go to the income statement. I'm going to say equals to the 120 as per the total balance plus the 1600 as per the adjustment. There you go. Moving along swiftly. Let's go back there. That amount has been taken into account. The auto electricity has also been taken into account. Let me highlight that in green. The next item is stationary. I'm going to copy stationary quickly. The description. Apologies. That happens sometimes. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to take it there to my description. Then I'm going to follow the same thought process as I did with the rest of the items. The amount is 74500 74, there wasn't any transaction uh, relating to stationary. If there was, it should have been taken into account in the physical stock take, as those items uh, just like stationary relate to stock. Um, so there wasn't any adjustment. So this is just a copy and paste simple mark that you're going to end. I'm just even going to copy this. I'm going to paste it there. No story at all. The next transaction relates to the interest on loan. I'm not going to do the interest on loan in this presentation, otherwise it will be too long. I'm going to copy, however, the interest on loan. I'm going to paste it there. Please follow the interest on loan in the next uh, presentation. The next item is carriage on purchases. We're not going to take it into account. Remember, we took it into account when we calculated what we call cost of sales in order to determine gross profit. I'm not going to take it into account. Courage and purchases, I'm just going to highlight in green so that in the next presentation, I don't refer to courage to purchases. Courage on sales, definitely, this is an expense. I'm going to copy. This is the last item I'm doing in this presentation. Um, is there anything else affecting the calculation of courage on sales? Quickly, let's go check. I remember the, it was that transaction. I want to highlight this in green. Let's quickly read an amount of 250 was still owing to REM for courage on goods sold. So this is courage on sales. It shouldn't be confused with this item, courage on purchases. It specifically relates to courage on goods sold, which is courage on sales. It's not taken into account in the determination of gross profit. What I mean is it's not taken into account in the determination of sales, nor is it taken into account in the determination of cost of sales. It's an operating expense. I'm going to take you to the calculation slide we given, okay, let's quickly go to the calculation slide relating to courage on sales. We're going to take the amount as per the trial balance as we've always been doing. That's that amount. And we're going to take, this is an expense payable because the business has already incurred the courage on sales, but it has actually not yet paid the courage on sales. Therefore, we're going to add it to get to an amount of courage on sales that will be taken to our income statement of 13307 Let's quickly go take it there. So initially we were given, let me quickly go to trial balance. I've forgotten the amount. Initially we were given 13057. 13057. The adjustment wanted us to take an expense payable of 250. There you go. 250. There you go. Let me quickly go check just to make sure. Uh, transaction number five, it was 250 there you Okay, at this stage, this is where I'm going to end. I haven't taken into account um, other items that could reside under your additional information and that could have an impact in the completion of the income statement. I don't want this presentation to be too long. I'm going to stop here. In the next presentation, I'm going to tackle other items relating to the income statement. Thank you.